In this poem, the speaker describes a workman walking home after a long day at work who pauses at the top of a hill to light his pipe. The simple and powerful image represents resilience in the face of all life's obstacles. How do we overcome the challenges of life? Life is tough. Does that mean it's just one long journey of despair and weariness ending in death? Despite these concerns, the workman in this poem has quite a laid-back and confident attitude to life, even though it's tough, which is a very Australian way of looking at the world. As we go through the poem, we'll unpack several key themes like the realities of hardship, suffering and death, and the workman's response of optimism and resilience. Let's get started. First, let's think about the poem's structure and form. The poem is structured into one 18-line stanza. This uninterrupted structure mimics life as it's portrayed in the poem. Life just keeps going and going and going. As for the metre, or beat of the line, lots of the lines are in iambic tetrameter. That means they have eight syllables and every second one is stressed, like in the first line. This workman dredges home at dusk. Sometimes Dobson varies this pattern, but overall the poem is mostly in iambic tetrameter. This mimics the effect of a worker plodding home, step by step, evoking the ongoing march of time. Also, none of the lines rhyme with each other. So we can describe the form of the poem as blank verse, which means there's some kind of metre, but no rhyme. As such, the poem still has a continuous rhythm created by the metre, but the lack of rhyme keeps it conversational and thoughtful, rather than overly stiff and clunky. Let's think about the title too, Over the Hill. What do you think of when you hear this phrase? It's an idiom or common expression. You might know some other idioms, like how being down in the dumps means that you're sad, and how being out of the loop means that no one has kept you updated. The idiom over the hill refers to people who are past their prime and getting older. This helps us imagine the workman in the poem as someone older, looking back over life and thinking about the inevitability of death. Over the hill is also a metaphor for overcoming an obstacle. In the poem, you'll notice that hills become a motif or recurring symbol representing the challenges of life. Let's read the first few lines where the speaker describes a workman walking home at dusk. We see his boots kicking at the dirt and his cap swinging in the air as he reaches the top of the hill. This workman dredges home at dusk with bluntly forward boots that toss the roam earth out like chaff behind. His swung cap scooping cups of wind, he crests the hill and fills the sky. Overall, the workman seems exhausted after a long day's hard work. It's a familiar experience for lots of Australians. You could read the workman as a metonym for the working class in Australia. Remember, a metonym is where one thing is used to represent a bigger idea. Maybe he's a miner, or you could also read him as representative of all humanity. Life is full of hard work. Also, dusk is a symbol representing the end of life. In describing the workman walking home at the end of the day, the speaker is reminded that we are all headed for death at the end of our lives. Like we mentioned before, these lines are in iambic tetrameter. This is great for mimicking the workman's plodding footsteps up the hill. The hard alliteration repeating the heavy D and B sounds add to this plodding effect by falling on stressed beats of the line as the workman dredges home at dusk and has bluntly forward boots. 
The effect is cacophonic, which means it creates a harsh, unpleasant sound. This reflects the grim reality that life is full of exhausting, hard work. How does the workman feel about all this? Look at how the earth and wind are juxtaposed or put next to each other. While the workman's boots kick up the Rome earth like chaff, his swinging cap scoops cups of wind. The simile comparing earth to chaff suggests that it is lightweight, blowing away in the breeze. Chaff is the part of wheat that is thrown away, so in literature it often symbolises useless or temporary things. Similarly, the metaphorical cups of wind evoke something insubstantial. Can you imagine holding a cup full of wind? There'd be nothing in it. Both chaff and wind can be blown away in a moment. This points to the ultimate futility or pointlessness of the workman's labour. When the workman dies, all his work eventually will be lost in time. This doesn't necessarily have to be depressing. It means that all the workman's worries, too, are ephemeral. In other words, they won't last. As the workman comes to the top of the hill, he metaphorically fills the sky. This boldly hyperbolic or exaggerated image contrasts with the slow drudgery described at the beginning of the poem. Despite the difficulties of his labour, the workman still finds confidence and courage as he reaches the crest of the hill. Remember how over the hill is an idiom for getting old? That means cresting the hill represents the peak of the workman's life. And remember how hills are a motif for the obstacles of life? So here, cresting the hill is also symbolic of overcoming a challenge in life, which has led to a confident outlook. Let's keep reading. We'll see the workman gazing at the sunset as he prepares to light his pipe by striking a match. Even though he's had a hard day at work, he still doesn't seem downtrodden and depressed at all. His eyes lit windows facing west to take the lemon-coloured light while the day slowly drains away, or strides from hill to hill and strikes a match against the friendly stars hanging his cap on the horn of the moon. Check out the phrases that build an image of sunset. The workman is facing west, gazing at the lemon-coloured light as the day slowly drains away. The sunset symbolises the inevitability of death. Just like he's reaching the end of his workday, he is also reaching the end of his life. However, he doesn't seem particularly depressed about this reality. His eyes are described metaphorically as having lit windows, suggesting that there's a light within him. This symbolises his optimism, or positive outlook on life, even though death is coming. And notice the colour imagery of lemon-coloured light. If the speaker wanted to portray the workman as melancholic or sad, they could have described the sunset with a phrase like sickly yellow. But instead, they've chosen an unexpected comparison to lemons. This creates a light-hearted tone, portraying the workman's optimism. Just because the workman is optimistic doesn't mean he's ignoring the inevitability of mortality. Listen to the alliteration repeating the heavy D sound in while the day slowly drains away, emphasising the reality of death. Notice the slow rhythm of the line. So far, the poem has been in a steady, iambic tetrameter, as we've discussed. But this line starts with a stressed beat, wilder. That beat is called a troche, dumda, instead of the normal iams, which start with an unstressed beat like this, dadum. And the next two syllables are both stressed day slow, in a beat called a spondy. 
Only at the end of the line do we go back to the normal I ams. Li drains away. Let's listen to two lines together so you can hear how much slower the rhythm is. To take the lemon colored light while the day slowly drains away. To put all this analysis together, we could say that the line begins with a trochee and a spondy before resolving back into two iams. The slow rhythm created by the trochee and the spondy reflects the slow sunset and hence the slow but constant passage of time towards death. But as we've seen so far, all these reminders of oncoming death never make the workman depressed. See how confidently he strides from hill to hill. Again, we have our hill motif, which symbolizes how he can overcome all of life's challenges. As he gets ready to light his pipe, he metaphorically strikes a match against the friendly stars while hanging his cap on the horn of the moon. The images remind us of earlier in the poem where the workman fills the sky. But hang on a second. How can you light a match on a star or hang your cap on the moon? That's absurd. Well, think about it from the workman's perspective. He's looking up at the night sky while lighting his match and swinging his cap so that from his point of view, it looks like he's striking a match on the stars and hanging his cap on the moon. When the speaker takes someone's point of view, that's called focalization. Here, the focalization emphasizes the workman's exuberant and confident approach to life. Even though he's still technically on Earth, in his optimism, he feels like he's hanging out with the stars and moon. Also, stars symbolize fate. Here, they are personified, that is, given human characteristics, by the epithet or descriptor of friendly. So the workman sees his fate in life as great, just like he sees the stars as friendly. He's optimistic, even though life is full of hills and challenges and will eventually end in death. In the last lines of the poem, the workman lights his pipe and gazes out at the mountains around him. Now as he stands to light his pipe with quite unconscious insolence, he could move mountains if he cared, but a mountain in the palm of one's hand is a troublesome thing, so he lets them lie, or lifts one, looks at it, quiets the trees, turns it slowly and puts it down. The visual image of the worker lighting his pipe suggests carefree relaxation. The action is described as displaying quite unconscious insolence, meaning he's a bit insolent or rebellious but doesn't realise it. Notice the words unconscious and insolence are polysyllabic or long and full of lots of syllables. This contrasts to the previous line, which was monosyllabic, meaning that each word only had one syllable, now as he stands to light his pipe. The sudden shift from simple monosyllabic words to a fancy polysyllabic description creates a playful tone, celebrating the worker's defiant optimism. His carefree approach to life is subtly rebellious against the reality of death. The next line claims that the workman could move mountains if he cared. It's a biblical allusion, or reference to the Bible, where Jesus taught that faith can move mountains. The allusion demonstrates that the workman has so much resilience and optimism, he could achieve great things in life. We're again reminded of earlier in the poem, where the worker fills the sky. This is Dobson's celebration of resilience and optimism in Australia's working class. However, in contrast to the suggestion that the workman can move mountains, all he's doing is lighting a pipe. In fact, he thinks that moving a mountain is troublesome. 
This explanation is pathetic or anticlimactic. Even though the workman is capable of doing great things, symbolised in his metaphorical ability to move mountains and hold them in the palm of his hand, he can't really be bothered. He's happy to accept his fate in life rather than try to change the world. The last two lines comprise a list of simple monosyllabic verbs or actions. The workman lifts a mountain, looks at it, quiets the trees that are on the mountain, turns it, then puts it down. The gentle sibilance or repetition of S sounds contributes to the peacefully contemplative tone here. Of course, the workman isn't literally lifting up a mountain. It's a metaphor for pursuing greatness and changing the world. The speaker is imagining the workman doing this, thinking that he's so full of strength and resilience that he can conquer any obstacle or mountain in life. Yet instead, the workman has chosen a peaceful, carefree approach to life, symbolised by putting the mountain down. Nice work. We've just worked our way through the whole poem. We've seen that the workman is faced with many challenges in life, symbolised by all hills and mountains in the poem. He's also faced with the inevitability of death, symbolised by the sunset. However, he doesn't give in to despair, neither does he desperately pursue greatness by changing the world, even though he could move mountains if he wanted to. Instead, he just lights a pipe and looks at the landscape around him. It's a beautiful depiction of the carefree attitude to life that's so central to Australian working-class culture. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on Dobson's poetry, check out our analysis of Summer's End.